Someone recently asked on the channel, man, I uh, forgot how to play L5R. And I realized um, I don't have any how to play videos for the old L5R system. I'm pretty sure there's lots of videos for the new one, given, you know, it's the video age and this game is ancient as stone. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a few things about L5R, the card game. Now, this card game, this is a Lion Clan deck that I have made and used. My Lion Clan deck is very teachable, and it doesn't have a lot of weird power shenanigans or anything like that going on. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how things work with the, the original 1995-2015 card game. So, first of all, you usually lay out four provinces off the top of your Dynasty deck, like this. If you're wondering about how to construct a deck, I have a different video for that. It's called How, uh, how the Old 5R is More Simple Than You Think. That video has deck construction pretty much laid out for you. Um, so here, you have your Dynasty deck set up with four provinces. You draw five cards off top of your deck. That may or may not be in reference to the five rings, but oh well. Um, you don't really need seven cards in your hand because you have four right there. So here is your, uh, here's your hand. At the start of your turn, first of all, you determine who goes first in a very simplistic manner. Who has the highest personal honor? As a Lion Clan, a Hall of Akoto player, that's seven. Um, your average honor is going to be like two to four, so these guys are definitely going first unless someone beats the crap out of them somehow. Um, the Shadowlands has like a negative 19. They very much deserve to go last though, trust me, their cards are slightly overpowered. Um, so what you do to start your turn, you, you have your hand already, and you start, I believe it is from, I'm, I'm backwards right now, so I have this instinct. I believe you start from left and go to the right. So this means I should be doing it this way. <laughs> okay, so I pull the Jade Works. This is a holding. I can pay three gold, and from now on it'll make three gold for me. That's great. Ikoma Kauku. He's actually pretty good for a first turn personality. He has a gold cost of five. His honor requirement is five, so I've already beaten that. He has a personal honor of two. He's a wimp. He's got a one in force and a three in chi. So if I gave him a Naganada, he could probably go duel people. That'd be kind of weird to have a dueling old man out there. This old guy's job, he's a Lion Clan historian. His entire job is to record history for the Lion Clan and give you bonuses. He's not that great of a first turn pull, but I might think about grabbing him just because. Ah! Copper mine. I wanted to cover this. Copper mines are a, uh, they're a gold holding. I pay two gold. It makes two gold when you bring them out. Very basic holding, but this one is one of those that's clan specific. Copper mines give you three gold if you are Lion Clan. So this is actually, I'm probably going to be buying this or this first turn and going from there. Going back to my last card, oh, here we go. Matsuyojo. He is the most common Lion Clan personality in the original set. 2-2, two, two, basic force and chi value for a, 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 any personality, really. He has a 5 honor requirement, I passed that. He's got a 5 gold requirement. Now since he's part of my clan, I can reduce that by 2 and pay for him off the bat if I really wanted to. But I'm not that guy. He's also got a personal honor of two, so he's not the most upstanding Lion Clan personality, but he's pretty good. We, we, we trust him. So to start the turn, this is turn one. I have nothing else to do in my, with my hand and whatnot. I bow out my stronghold. I bring into play Jade Works. Goes over here, bowed out. Tapping is the magic term. Bowing is the L5R term. I replace this, and I may want to actually toss him. I may want to keep him. So I'm going to go ahead and toss him into the discard pile. So I no longer have the backup of Ikoma Kauku. And I replace him with another face down card. So I can now draw two more cards at the beginning of my next turn and have these options sitting for use. They're not really in my hand. The other player can go attack these cards if they want to. However, the problem is, is that in old L5R, first turn kills were not a thing. In fact, in L5R, First turn kills are not a thing. The fact you have to go through four provinces guarantees you you're going to have at least four battles in a game. Not just one hit kill when you get hit by some kind of channeled fireball or something. There are pretty nasty combos in L5R, but they all take time. This game is time... This game is not a quick game. If your idea of a good game is fast and easy to pick up and play, go play some other game. L5R is really a game for those who want to sit down and enjoy an afternoon with friends together. 
because it can play out pretty long. Now, newer versions of the game do play faster. When they added the fact you can have holdings that you can start with, the, the border keep, the bamboo harvester, the game did go faster. And I often sat down with my one friend and played two or three games in the afternoon, where in the former days we would have played like one, maybe two, if we had like a really quick game. I would make decks that sucked, and people would make decks that were awesome, and I would get crushed. And so, okay, that deck concept didn't work. Let's play a different game. <laughs> so that was turn one. Bottom of turn one... That's the thing, is bottom of turn one, you draw an additional card and put it in your hand. Look, I have two charges. Guess I'm going to be attacking here in the near future. So I'm going to organize my hand a little and go to second turn. Wow. Second turn, you first thing you do is you straighten out all of your personality. Anyway, I pull a blacksmith. Ha ha. Oh my god. He could suck up all my resources if I really allow him to. Produce two gold plus one gold for every iron mine you have in play. I do have iron mines in this deck because having a blacksmith is good because they pay more. Vow to produce four gold to bring a weapon or armor into play. I can bring this guy into play easy that way. And I have some other more expensive weapons and armors too. So uh, let me see what my other card is. Wait, I did it backwards, didn't I? I did it this way, that way instead of this way. Uh, my habit is to do this and my, ha my head is looking in this direction right now while you guys are looking from this direction. Uh, like it's okay. Events happen, and if the event or region comes into play, they get dropped the moment they are played. Events usually go into play and happen until they go away, where regions go down. So, so honestly, my uh, now you might think it'd be cool to get a personality in the play and like you know go and do a uh, to go to an attack phase. This is Legend of the Five Rings. If you attack on the first turn, you might be doing something wrong. You might be doing something right, too. There's, there's ways to make it work. But it's actually a really good idea to build your kingdom first. Now, I'm completely defenseless on my first turn. A lot of people are. So we're going to bow out to bring the copper, uh, copper mine into play. He's going to go join us over here. Now, mind you, I have not played the rest of the... the there's more phases of the turn than this. I, you can start usually with an untapped phase. You check and you pull your regions and events into place, so it's kind of an events phase. Then you have an action phase where you attach personalities, you equip weapons, and you play political actions and limited actions. Kind of like the grand scheme of things. Then you have an attack phase. Then you go to this part. So just letting you know that's how that proceeds. But I had nothing to attack with. I had no cards to play from my hand. I mean, this deck is tactical, not strategic in nature. So, bowing out for the copper mine, bowing the jade works, and paying less honor for Matsuyojo. So I actually have a personality in play now. Yay, I can show you how the game actually works. This guy's going to have to stick around. This is a small farm. It's kind of a gimmick card. It's a zero-cost card that plays for one gold. This guy is going to become very useful here in the near future. In L5R, you can't split up your gold costs. You can't take... Notice how I paid three gold for this two-cost card? I had to do that because gold is segmented. Taxes and cost of life is a thing in this game. So what you do is you essentially have to round up your gold costs. Well, I want to pay for a two copper mine item, but I only have three for my jade works and three for my stronghold. Well, gee, I guess I'm going to pay three for my stronghold. So that's how that works. You can't split your gold costs. There are cards that allow you to do that, though. I don't have them in this deck. In fact, I don't have them in any decks. I focus on other things. There's better ways to play the game than worrying about how you split your gold. If you're splitting hairs over how you split your gold, or if you're splitting hairs over... What's a good thing not to focus too much on? Things that deal with rings are very specialized. If you're going for an honor victory or a military victory, you don't need to care about the rings. After all, like I said before, it's the legend of the five rings. The five rings are not mandatory. You know, they are if you're like a religious fanatic or something, I guess. I draw a card. The maximum amount of cards I can have in my hand, I believe, is eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Don't worry, I'll be paying for these things out of my hand. I've got a crushing attack. That's a good one. If you outweigh your enemy's force by double amount, you can just end the battle and declare them destroyed. Um, there's ways to get rid of that card, but that's a freaking great card. Um, that's why I have it in the deck. It's a, it's, a, it's a clinch pin for making really short, quick battles. Beginning of round three. Unbow all these. 
In L5R, you notice there's kind of a top title area. It gets really quickly to the point where you will have games where literally um, you're stacking things in nice big rows. That's kind of how the game goes. Uh, I think in the new game, things stack sideways, but we'll leave that out. The uh, stacking vertically actually is very good for controlling card space. And anybody intelligent has stacked, has realized there's a title thing and realized, hey, you can stack a lot of things into this personality space and whatnot. So, start up turn two. I straightened everything out. Okay, I have to go from this way to that way. That's right. Cool! Matsu Ajitoki. He's my favorite Lion Clan guy. He's just a background character, really. But he's the angry and constant uh, Cavalry Clan guy that will not be shot down. His special ability is you cannot shoot him with a ranged attack. Ranged attack is like direct damage, but it works against personalities primarily. Then we have an Iron Mine, the combo boy that goes to Blacksmith. That's a good, that's a good, good draw. Matsu Chokoku. I like Matsu Chikoku, Mr. No Fear himself. He's immune to fear effects, and I believe he can target someone else that's being targeted by fear and get rid of their fear effects too. After all, this is the Lion Clan. They're brave. So the Dynasty phase is coming to mind, so I'm going to save some uh, gold from the Dynasty phase. I'm going to go ahead and... Well, he costs six instead of five. I have to... Because now I have to worry about, hmm, the cost of things. Now my hand's getting full. Which one of these is cheaper? The Naginata is cheaper. Let's show you how things happen. Before, it's the limited phase now. I've seen all my events. I've seen everything. I have this Naginata in my hand. I'm going to bow for a Jade work. And put the Naginata on Matsuyojo. And then, the rest of my hand doesn't matter at this point. Um, Dynasty phase. So, we're going to pay four gold and get that blacksmith in the play and functioning. I have Matsuyojo as a sacrificial lamb. I could probably... I paid for the Naginata, so I'm probably not going to pay really for anything else as far as personalities. I'm being risky here. If someone else had a fast way to bring out cards quickly and start ramming them down my throat, that's not happening right now. <laughs> so... Copper Mine is bowing out. The Copper Mine produces two gold to bring into play the Iron Mine. By the way, bottom of turn three. Okay, so it's kind of slow, but still, I am now prepared. I am making four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Because it makes one after one because of the Iron Mine. So 15 gold across all these productions. I can start whaling. Bottom of turn three, and I feel confident in my ability to survive an attack. I might lose Matsuyoj, or I might just choose to lose the province and keep going. But I have enough gold that I can run the rest of my game off this, off this gold. This is a good amount of gold to have at turn three. If this has happened to you, you're playing a good game, and you're ready to win a game of L5R. So, bottom of turn three, draw a card. Oh, I'm not going to be playing this one for a while. Samurai Cavalry, this is a rare. It is the most expensive gold cost card in the original edition for followers. It's a six force cavalry card that can also shoot range attacks. Why it ever shoot range attacks, I don't know. That's going into my hand. Thus ends my turn. Okay, let's do one more uh, turn of, uh, of building before we actually go on to our battle phase and show you what's going on. So, at the top of turn four, I, uh, I'm going to straighten everything out. Matsuyojo has done nothing more than just defend the Lion Clan, which is fine. I'm, attack I'm, not, I'm facing off against an invisible opponent. Given the cards I'm going to be playing against with in the battle phase, I want to strongly bet that they are biting defensively and they have multiple personalities out. But I'm going to attack them for a very good reason. Um, so, let's see what we have here, starting with... Oh, cool! Matsuturi. He may actually help us out quite a bit, but not if you want to go battle. Um, and another Matsu Chikoku. How, good, how much do we want to alleviate fear? Looking across at my opponent, he's not going to be fear-heavy, so I'd probably better spend gold on... 
getting a big bad dude in the play like Matsuturi may not bow as part of an, a lobby attempt. Okay, lobbying for the Imperial favor, we have not done yet. And it's kind of wasteful unless you're playing a political deck that has certain build to it. So let's not even care about lobbying for the Imperial favor. I'll cover political phases in the game, probably in a different video, because it's not required for survival in this game. <laughs> if, if you're playing a political deck, you're actually more refined. What do you know? This is a good old-fashioned go in there and beat people with swords things. So here's the uh, our Lion Clan Samurai. And here is... Uh, he, he cannot be targeted with the Imperial Favor, though. So he's an anti-political tool. I like that. We'll probably bring him into play. Then we have Matsu's Toki. He was here last turn. And we got a clone of this boy. Man, whatever am I going to do? Well, first thing I'm going to do is probably get Matsu Yojo some, uh, some equipment. I can actually pay for my Samurai Cavalry if I want to, but they belong on someone else. And they're expensive. It's going to take my entire gold production that turn to do that. So I have a small farm and a stronghold. We're going to bow out to make four gold to put archers on Matsu Yojo. I'm going to shoot someone if they come next to me. So I usually put my weapons and items next to the personality and my followers further out. These guys bow to produce a ranged three attack. I'll show you how that works here relatively shortly. But that's why I put followers on the outside, is so I can easily bow them out. They, uh, it's just a good idea. How you organize yourself, this is a great game for very organized people, because the game lends itself to organization. Now here's the funny thing. Uh, I My hand's getting kind of fat. And I don't want to uh, spend all my time building, so next turn I'm going to probably attack. I'm not telling my opponent that, but still. we got here? Uh, two gold from the iron mine, three gold from a copper mine. That's five gold. Uh, Jade Works makes three, Blacksmith makes three, four for a weapon. Um, got bad news for me. How can I split that up? This is six right here. I'm probably going to bring Turi into play with that. And this is merely five. So I'm going to be doing... You'll notice I'm not paying the full gold cost. If you pay the full gold cost for someone of your clan, you add their personal honor to your personal honor, and your personal honor climbs. That's something I haven't been doing, because as a, a military player, it's like, let's get these guys out in the field. I built up my economy. I'm going to build up my army right now. Ka-chink. Ka-chink. We're just going to grab him and him. Get out here and fight, guys. Uh, we'll let the original draw be the guy I pay for, and then I'll put him in the, in the dustbin. Um, da -dum -dum, dum -da -dum -dum -dum. I like Matsu Toki, but he is uh, he's not our idea of a um, good idea right now, although cavalry attacks are great. Right now, we're just going to pile drive the enemy, which could prove to be our... our uh, are doom. However, some people are just compulsive combatants. It's been my dynasty phase. There are cards, some of the best cards in this game tell you, take a dynasty phase before your attack phase. Yes, do it. If you have a card that says that, you have a winning card there. You play that card so you can do stuff like pay for these guys and say, hey, other guy, I'm attacking you. <laughs> so I'm going to draw a card. It's the armor of Sun Tao. This is going to be the bottom of turn five. But turn six is going to be interesting because I'm going to start myself a fight. Battle phase is kind of the more interesting part of L5R for a lot of people, and a lot of people invest in battle phase greatly. As you can imagine, I have uh, we've built up a force. This is the exact same force that I had through the last uh, five turns. It is turn six, and we are going to attack the Crab Clan. Not a great idea, actually. There are two phases to attacking. There's an infantry phase where the attacking player says, I am going after that province. And you can choose all provinces if you really want to. But honestly speaking, usually you just say, I'm going after this province. And then what happens is the other player has the opportunity to choose to assign defenders to that province. From there, all defenders are assigned. If you have characters, sorry, personalities and followers in play, where everybody in the unit has the cavalry trait, you then may choose, I'm going to attack this province, if the other player then has cavalry personalities and followers in the same unit. 
they can then point out and say, I'm going to defend here. And so cavalry phase happens after infantry. It shows how maneuverable cavalry is in this game. And it's why there's actually a lot of power in the early Unicorn Clan decks in Legend of the Five Rings. As an attacker, I tell the opponent, I'm going to go after this card here. And this card for a reason. This is Hida Oushi. She's not the champion of the Crab Clan, but she might as well be. And she did rule the, the Crab Clan for a, a certain period of time. You know, I just realized my uh, Fate deck over here just disappeared. It's just like poofed out of nowhere. Now I have a hand that uh, the Crab Clan have drawn. The Crab Clan have a hand, and we don't know what's in the Crab Clan's hand. They could have an amazing hand. They could have a crappy hand. You know, whatever not. Now there's a reason I have the Strongholds out here too. Your strongholds may have special abilities that deal with battle. The Crab Clan do not. They have an unbound, an unbound uh, stronghold right now, so they can bow it to produce gold. If a, if a combat effect had a gold cost to it, they could do that, but they're not going to right now. What we're going to do is we're going to assign everybody to defend Hida Oishi's province, because if this province is destroyed, the deck shrinks down and her card is discarded. See? Our provinces shrink if that happens. So you want to, one, defend Oshi because she's our future champion, and two, and our present general, and two, we're going to, uh, we kind of want to keep our four cards, and we think we can hand the, uh, the Lion Clan, you know, we can hand the Lion Clan theirs in combat. So, in any case, all my guys are defending on this side, all my guys are attacking on this side, the first action goes to the defender. He's going to play a dispersive terrain, which covers everybody on his side with a plus two force bonus. So I suddenly add six force to my army total with this card. If you look at the cards, four here, three here, two plus two if you're defending, and one here for a Tetsubo. Tetsubo does not give you any a further force bonus, weirdly enough. And then the Nagana, we were matched in statistics down there as far as the uh, the lion were concerned. But Tempako has a special ability where he gains a plus two bonus where he, where, when defending. So between his defense ability that makes him now a five force, plus the fact that that dispersive terrain now gave six force to the entire army based on the number of personalities in play, that's the thing about terrains. They don't pass out their force right away, but they will at the end of the battle. So technically I can still do something to attack these guys and remove them before they can get their force bonus. So I played an action, and it is now the Lion Clan player's combat turn. Yes, there's turns inside of this game, inside of the game. That's good, though, to play an action. Now, I could use this to negate the terrain, because guess what? The Lion Clan stronghold has the ability to negate terrains. Battle destroy terrain or reaction, battle negate the effects of terrain. When it is played, the terrain is still in play, but has no effects. Ooh, that's a, a reaction ability. That's really cool. I don't. I like to have multiple uh, one-ups in my opponents as a reaction to that. I'm going to bow this out and negate the effects of the terrain. We are still sitting on dispersive terrain, though, but we're fighting a more even battle. These guys are kind of non non impressed with that, but at least he has the plus two defense bonus. Oh well. As a Lion Clan player, it is my duty to play a charge out of my hand. Matsu uh, Chikoku here is going to play charge. That's going to immediately add three force to him because it adds the force to him. It doesn't add the force to the army or as a terrain effect. It adds the force directly to him. So he's now six force. I sometimes did this in the old game to show, look, I have a charge bonus. Of course, you've got to throw away your cards at the end of the battle if you're doing this. If you have a permanent effect, though, it's a nice idea to keep it, though. So that's my brain dead reaction because, gee, I'm an attacking lion. I might as well play charge cards until I run out of charge cards. Well, you only have three in a deck, so if you want to burn them all in one go, you can do that. Here we have the crab's reaction to the lion now essentially beating us in force by one point because they've negated our terrain, remember? The terrain is here. It just has no effect. So I'm just going to turn it upside down to show this effectless. I am sucking at life right now. Well, it's going to get a lot suckier. The crab can't do anything, so they're going to have to pass their turn. 
I hate passing turns in battle because what happens is if the other player says, I pass my turn, it locks down. And there you go. At this point, the Lion Clan general could do that and completely win. Lion Clan general is going to be having fun, though. He's going to take his archers and he's going to shoot Hidesukune. Hidesukune is going to die to a shower of arrows. The archers create a range 3 attack. He has a 3 force value. He dies from arrows. He goes into the discard pile as honorably dead. So, he died honorably in battle. As a result of that happening, much like kicking over a hornet's nest or attacking Pearl Harbor, I suddenly have something I can do. Reaction! It's my turn to play a reaction now! This is a rare card. If you have one of these, please keep it. They're good. Be prepared to dig two graves. Uh, target personality in a battle, when a personality of your clan is killed, until the end of the game, when any personality from your clan opposes the target personality, uh, Matsu Yojo is the guy who did the killing. If you're opposing the personality in a battle or duel, they gain a 2 force 2 chi bonus. That takes effect immediately. 2 force here, 2 force here, chi there as well. So now we have the archers are bowed out. We have a 6 force here, this is 10 force, 3 force, 13 force here. We have 5 force here and 4 force here. This now becomes 6 force. He's at 5. Oh boy, this is nasty. Uh, that's 11. We tie at 13. We tie at 13. And the funny thing is, this stays in play. As long as Matsu Yojo is alive, we are prepared to dig two graves. Matsu Turi is going to charge up and defend his boy. So that's three force on, on, the, on, the, on his side. It's not on the crab side. The crab are now saying, oh, shit. The crab are actually a lot better at defending than this. It can't happen. I have the ability to destroy a terrain card and play for this battle. I have a seat diversionary tactics. If I was attacking, I have the amazing rallying cry. But not at this point. No, I don't. They beat us by three-fourths right now. If the battle resolves, these guys are going to die in battle. And these guys are going to go home victorious and bowed out. I do think it's bowed out, too. Let me put this, this hand down. Where did I put the hand for the lion clan? There it is. The Lion do not have a rallying cry. They're going to bow out as a result of this battle. The Lion Clan have won a great victory today. These guys, the charge cards go away, so no credit for these guys. Um, he bows in completeness. And we strike this province for 16 fourth worth. These guys are blocking with 13 force between... Uh, He's at 6, he's at 5, um, and goes to 7. So 6 and 7, that's 13. We prevent, see the strength here? Strength value of 7? Strength value of 7. So the value of the province is 7. 13 minus, 16 minus 13 means only 3 force goes through to attack the province. Hida Oushi is safe, and her men have died to defend, against, defend her against the enemy. So, which is kind of sad, because Hida Tadashiro is supposed to die anyway. Oh well. These guys go home as honorably dead, and so we, uh, we are very much hurting as far as crab is concerned. But we're going to bow our stronghold and a few other holdings you don't see to bring into play Hida Oushi at the bottom of our turn <laughs> when that happens. And we have ways, if we had the ability to, uh, we have cards in our hand that allow us... Where did my hands go? Yeah. We have a card that allows us to bring a personality into play and then put a weapon on them. So... Brings the personality to play with a reserve movement and allows them to attach a weapon. So I have that kind of thing where if it was the end of my turn, I could bring her into play and, and take care of, of some stuff that way. He's all bowed out. We have no forces to deal with. I really wish we had a, uh, I think it's called At the Last Moment. It allows you to play a uh, something during your dynasty phase. There's a few cards that do that. You want to, if you like this game, you want to look into cards that screw around when the phases happen. Those are very powerful cards. We have seen how the uh, game plays out. We have uh, not destroyed a Crab Clan province, but we've destroyed some Crab Clan uh, forces. The Lion Clan are in a very good position to start winning the game, even though 
if the crab have some kind of dickery of turns, they can pull this out and, you know, potentially try to win a game here. There's, there's a few other details. More cards adds more detail. But for the most part, this is what you have to know about how the game plays out. A very basic look at it. I could probably be more technical about how uh, I've just explained this, but this is uh, this is how the game plays. In the future, I'll probably cover political uh, actions, which can get weird. Limited actions, which can get weird. And uh, dueling. I'll show you how to make duels, too, because you know what? Dueling is like a fine art in the original L5R. There was a different game called Legend of the Burning Sands that had a different dueling system I liked better. But Legend of the Burning Sands is so dead, it deserves its own video on this channel. So, in any case, uh, thanks very much for uh, watching. And by all means, if you've got old L5R cards, bring them out and play with them.